Hello and welcome to CIO News. I am Kishma Soni, your host for the broadcast and chief editor at CIO News. This is our exclusive fireside chat powered by GoTo and it is a recorded session which will be available on our website which is cionews.co.in and our CIO News LinkedIn handle. I'm very excited to invite our guest for today. We have Sandesh Govalkar, the Vice President and Head of Enterprise IT at Engine One. Sandesh is a business outcome focused information technology leader with over 20 plus years of experience in conceptualizing, developing and implementing innovative business technology solutions. He's an expert in grasping the big picture with areas of business technology. Expertise include in managing infrastructure, operations, end user computing, security, compliance, disaster recovery, in line with the current technology trends. Um, he interacts easily with people to, of diverse background, cultures, and professional levels, and demonstrate capabilities to quickly understand align IT requirements with business objectives. Um, Sandesh, it is an absolute pleasure to have you today, and I'm really looking forward to get valuable insights of our discussions. Hey, thanks, Kushbu, for the introduction. Yeah. Happy to be here. Hey. Same here, the pleasure is us, uh, Sandesh. Um, I would also like to invite uh, Triveni Ravindraj, uh, the India sales head at GoTo. Uh, Triveni has 21 plus years of experience across business development, strategic alliance, and people management. And uh, Triveni has worked with brands such as Wipro, Dun & Street, City, and many more. Uh, Triveni, pleasure to have you again on our series. Thanks a lot, Kushbu. Uh, look forward to having great discussions with uh, Sandesh. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so to begin with, uh, you know, I wanted to put across the first question to you, Sandesh. Uh, you know, with the current dynamic environment we are in, which is earlier work from home and then hybrid, and then uh, you know, organizations are deciding whether to do a complete work from office, etc. Um, you know, how is, um, you know, Angel One kind of, uh, you know, looking at this current scenario of working, what is your work culture, etc. And what, how is your typical day looking like, uh, you know, with such a dynamic environment, Sandesh? Mm, yeah, we have something unique. Uh, some unique happened with us, with Angel One. Uh, previous to pandemic, uh, it was a traditional working company like others, uh, all-time office work. Mm, because of this pandemic, we started work from home and uh, our management took a bold decision uh, to declare work from anywhere perpetually for everyone in the organization. So now we are into work from anywhere model. So anywhere means we have a choice whether you want to come to office or want to work from Cafe Coffee Day or Starbucks or from your native, and that decision is yours. You have to take that decision. Obviously, for some right. functions where they need to be in office, where uh, they need to collaborate and do some banking or, or board and things, legal and all, obviously, they come to office. They don't resist, but the choice is theirs. Uh, they don't. They don't need to be in office daily or something. When your needs come, right. you decide. Uh, you you are mature enough to, to take that decision. If you come to office, you have to go to native and work from the that area for two months. Okay. Right. So that culture we have developed, and we have seen that efficiency has increased, and people are empowered. They have given a freedom. So currently we are running show like this. Sure, sure. So uh, given the environment of a distributed workforce, Sandesh, uh, you know it's it's very it's become very really important to scale up and arm the IT teams with the right tools. So what have been the demands of your IT ecosystem in this front? Uh, Demands are like, obviously, we shifted desktop users to laptop for obvious reasons. Right. Desktops are not practical for this purpose. Um, 
and I think uh, we have all our applications access from that laptop. Mm -hmm. The challenge is not from the users, the challenge is from, to, to, to give you an example, before pandemic, uh, we had around 30, 40 branches, something like that. And um, everything was inside perimeter. Users used to come to the office and work to their desktop computer. So we had what all traditional technologies like firewalls and whatnot, web gateways and all. So we knew we knew that these are the perimeters and we need to protect that. Okay. Uh, because of this pandemic, these 40 branches became 4,000. Because now everyone's home is my branch, right? People move from Mumbai to Delhi to Calcutta to UAE to London or America, wherever they go, that is my branch. Now I need to protect that laptop. Correct? I cannot control their Wi Fi, whether they are connecting to hotspot or uh, public network or at the airport. My goal is to protect the laptop. So ultimately, our burden has increased. We have to <coughs> adopt to new technologies from traditional antivirus to next generation EDR and so monitoring them all. I think from user perspective, their work remains same, their applications remain same, whether they are in office or home. Yeah, that changes that. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So do you see that your entire IT, IT help desk support is fully empowered to provide the fast and efficient support to the current, um, you know, flexible and dynamic way of working? Uh, SLS has changed. Obviously, you cannot uh, give the same kind of support for every time. Uh, if user is at office, obviously the support will be instant immediately. Uh, in case of this current environment, users are busy in their meetings, phone calls, getting them on call or taking a remote, sometimes consumes time. Even user understands because he is not able to give the time, right? In case of hardware failure, when someone needs to visit there, so we have on-call support from our partner, we are tired. In case of replacement in office, it's an immediate replacement. If user is a remote place, then we courier it. We have a transit insurance. We have to involve all the other parties, courier companies. Machine goes there. All these practical challenges are there. I don't deny. So ASLA has increased. But uh, right. uh, somewhere we need, to, we need to agree to the fact that uh, users are happy and uh, they are our customers. We cannot ask right. them to visit office, right? Because we have closed almost all the branches, and a user don't have any branches where we. So we 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 stop support from that branches also. So we got extra manpower out. So that balance we have to make. I I I I, I not say that same kind of support and SLAs are there, uh, but uh, somewhere if you want to give the freedom and power to the user that you go anywhere in the world still will support I cannot keep engineer at every part of the world so users understand that they, they go to their remote native <coughs> area where there is a low uh, internet connection available so they are just they know how to manage that because everyone is techy now they, they, they understand Wi-Fi they understand uh, Hotspot. Even these kind, these children understand all this. So they don't blame IT. When they were in office, so everything was IT. This is not working. That is not working. When you give them a laptop and they work from home, they own many things. Their technical problems, they know which all problems belongs to IT, which are problems belong to their own home network or their mobile or their Wi-Fi. So even users understand. Right, right, absolutely. absolutely. So, um, on that, um, you know, Trivini, if you can throw some light, you've been interacting with, um, you know, a lot of uh, heterodoxies and C levels uh, on the similar topic. So, how have you seen, uh, you know, what the top 
priorities that uh, you know uh, C suite is considering when it comes uh, you know looking at remote support solutions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think before I answer that question, I think right we will um, just I will step. One, I'll take a, a step back and talk about what is really changing in this world, right? Because uh, we have been, uh, you know, sort of uh, in this field, like, you know, enabling remote work uh, from 2003, right? So we are not one of the pandemic born babies. We have been around for quite some time and doing the same thing that we're doing. So because of that, what we've done is, you know, uh, because we kind of now have a clear picture of how was you know the remote support world or the remote work world before the pandemic and how has it changed now right so what we did was we did a couple of research with uh, you know uh, along with IDC, uh, idg and gartner etc so one thing that came out pretty strong there is that right the adoption of remote work has increased a lot like some sandesh would agree that being from the it right we always had the luxury of remote work right specifically the it teams specifically the IT companies, uh, even before the pandemic. So that was not a new concept, but the adoption was obviously very low because people did not see the need for it or people did not imagine that it could be possible, right? But now what we've seen is obviously a lot of uh, non-IT, uh, a lot of, even a lot of essential services were forced to go 100% remote. So the adoption almost jumped to about, I think, 173%. Um, so, and today it's like, like Sandesh rightly pointed, it's become the obvious choice for employees, right? There was the, in the same survey, it was told that in today's world, if flexibility is not offered to the employees, right? Seven out of 10 will quit. So that is, uh, or people will not be attracted to join our brands, right? So that's definitely flexibility, work from home, hybrid work culture, these things have uh, completely taken a center stage. Now, if that is the scenario, right, there are a couple of things uh, which is sort of putting pressure on the IT, like like Sandesh said, right? The first and the foremost is shifting from off the perimeter of the office to homes. It could be like, like he rightly said, the cafes, you know, it's work from everywhere or work from anywhere, right? So obviously that is kind of taking your work and specifically from highly regulated industries like BFSI and, you know, healthcare, etc. It's a huge pressure on the security bit also, right? Because you have now highly confidential data being accessed from, you know, work uh, may not be in your within your network. Uh, you know, it may be public network also if people are obviously connecting from cafes, etc. How, so how do you safeguard that? So these something uh, is like, prerequisite and because of this what we've seen and I've been selling to you know uh, IT leaders like Sandesh and one thing that I have seen for us is slightly life has become a little easy I would say in sense um, it's uh, earlier remote support specifically was a good to have it was never a must to have solution right it was because most of the time your uh, IT technicians or help desk technicians were sitting in the same building probably the third floor fourth floor so if there was an issue, people would, you know, go down and check what's happening. But that's not the case today. And hence, we see that there has been a, a huge increase for uh, or a demand for having a remote desk uh, kind of a solution. Uh, because even the IT technicians today are taking uh, the requests from their home, right? So uh, be, given this scenario, there are a couple of things uh, that has or that should be changed when uh, probably evaluating, uh, you know, a, a remote support solution or a remote desktop software, right? So one of the main thing is, what is the core functionality you're looking for? Earlier, the only core functionality that everybody would look for is to provide support, right? To give troubleshoot. Uh, but today, I think what is very critical is that uh, the remote support solution or the software that you're using needs to have capability to you to uh, diagnose not only the desktops but laptops tablets phones um, especially the mobile phones you know again uh, uh, agnostic of the os could be mac could be android could be windows so that's something that be that's become extremely critical obviously because 
you know we it's kind of b by od era right now in in its true sense the second functionality uh, which is a which should be a part of the core functionality is quick diagnostics right again uh, the technicians today are more uh, probably well equipped or well trained to look at diagnosis when it comes to a desktop may not be or even laptop may not be the mobile devices may not be the tablets etc so you need to have a robust uh, desktop to uh, so remote desktop to help the technicians diagnose quickly the third one is unattended machines right because obviously uh, you know you're not in the same uh, premises people are working from home and when you when the technician takes uh, or remotes into the system it has to be it's not necessary that the um, you know that the employees need to be sitting in front of the desktop or laptop right they can do what they want to or for example during the lunch breaks etc they can take uh, remote they can do remote in if the unattended and un unattended access functionality is there uh, and the and the fourth thing is i think the multiple session handling capability because uh, uh, what 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 is what we have also seen that there is ha there has been a rise in the number of tickets that you know uh, one is receiving right earlier if it was say 100 tickets in a day we've seen that go up by almost you know two to three times again because of people not being uh, you know people working at home even a small issue can stall their work and specifically when you're in the finance sector etc you need to be online most of the time so uh, the downtime bit uh, is something that the employees cannot afford to have and hence the since see your ticket size is increasing but i'm sure the it technicians uh, headcount you know we don't have the luxury to or the uh, you know or the authority or the approval to increase that headcount so we have to obviously make do with the same set of people we have and and i'm sure uh, what we have also seen is that the attrition in the it technicians also has really really gone up thanks to the great resignation so multiple session handling capabilities uh, is another one then look finally looking at integration right i think we need to have systems which talk to each other and not work in silos so it becomes extremely critical that you know the remote support tool that you buy or you sort of look to change needs to be integrating with your ticketing tool needs to be integrating with your crm tools um they, they need to have out of box integrations or at least op open apis to integrate with your internal systems so these are some of the core functionalities that we have seen uh, change earlier these these used to be uh, you know like a good to have but today these have become the basis or basic uh, requirement in a remote support tool. Sure. Uh, thank you, Trivedi, for highlighting those. Um, on that, uh, uh, Trivedi, if you can share, uh, you know, what are the biggest challenges for before and after adopting a remote support solution? And how do you suggest overcoming those challenges? Yeah. Uh, so one of the biggest thing that we, uh, you know, obviously, again, you know, thanks to the pandemic, that security has become extremely critical, right? We have seen that a lot of, uh, a lot of breaches that have happened recently uh, across the globe, uh, you know, uh, has been either connected to phishing emails or either connected to a human element involved, which is stolen credentials or um, you know, compromised credentials, right? So, um, one thing that, uh, you know, before adopting a tool, uh, one needs to sort of look at that, how do we sort of eliminate those human elements, uh, even when you're accessing the remote support tool, not only for your employees, but also for your uh, users, like, you know, the technicians who are initiating the remote support solution. So, is it sort of compatible with the internal uh, single sign-ons that you guys have, you know, or the companies have, um, can we uh, associate or link it to a multi-factor authentication? Uh, can we look at the tool if if it complies with, uh, you know, zero uh, trust security, which means, you know, you'll have to authenticate at every step because it's easy um, for, uh, you know, the malicious actors to get into your system when initiating uh, the remote support solution. Um, the other bit is, can we sort of look at 
hosting uh, you know the remote support desktop link through your website and not to a third party website for example even go to for that matter we've seen a lot of company companies hosting it on their web page or intranet page where the sessions can begin uh, you know um, uh, begin very easily without having to uh, log into a third party website uh, these these are some of the things specifically because security is the biggest agenda for not only the cio not only the ceo but it's become a business agenda right now right so uh, so i think this needs to be looked at before uh, implementing um, the other thing is also with the increase in the ticket and large companies who have you know uh, multiple branches located in multiple uh, cities um, and uh, also having uh, you know a lot of uh, you know more than 10000 people or more than 5000 people also becomes very uh, important that your average handling time etc are taken care of so what kind of metrics so i think one thing is when you choose a remote support tool defining what are the metrics you know you want out of it obviously because you know uh, an roa roa is something that everybody looks at right so what can we sort of solve out of this can we look at re reduction of uh, you know or reduction of handling uh, handling time how can we look at first call resolution uh, if the if, if the agents are able to sort of diagnose and break fix the solution on the first call itself without having to repeat multiple tickets or how can we avoid more of l2 escalations and solve it in l1 so we can look at uh, uh, you know um, a lot of companies do look at such parameters that would be good because then you're holding us the you know vendors also responsible to you know achieve that with you post i think post uh, implementation one of the things is especially with the enterprise customers uh we need to sort of have some you know very uh, monthly or quarterly check ins to ensure that these metrics are met um if you do not have a customer success manager i would say demand for one because customer success managers help us to see the utilization obviously like you know uh, sandeep and his team may not have the luxury of time to look at what is this utilization of the you know licenses what are the what are the uh, are they even using some of the features that they had signed up for etc so the cu customer success managers can help in getting these kind of statistics etc and share it with the uh, management team at the customer space so these are some of the Dhruvini, uh... Yeah, so great. Um, thank you for highlighting those. I think one very important point you mentioned about was the ROI. So Sandesh, on that, um, having the right tool, um, you know, with all the priorities met is one challenge. And the other half is to drive enough ROI out of, uh, you know, the imp implementation and investment. So what are your driving forces when it comes to achieving the optimal ROI? Uh... Frankly, we don't we don't look ROI as a primary parameter when we plan to invest anything in IT or in any technology. First, there should be a need, or that's a basic when we don't think of much. If there isn't there is a, there isn't any need, then uh, obviously what benefit it will give. In terms of security, enhancement, customer experience, um, all those parameters. Uh, then we think of uh, ROI, whether the cost is reasonable, viable, whether we should invest right now at good capacity or we should start <coughs> small. So all, all this depends on the, the solution which is being offered. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, great. I think this has been um, a great conversation with you, Sandesh and Triveni. Thank you for, um, you know, sharing your insights, um, Sandesh, and, you know, how, how Angel One is currently functioning, etc. This is some very uh, valuable insights. Thanks, Triveni, for giving us insights on the remote support uh, evaluation. Um, I look forward to having many more conversations with you in future. Uh, thank you for being part of the CI News episode.
Thanks, Kushu. Thanks, Sandesh. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.